we're attempting to restore some of the form and function of the river with the ultimate objective of bringing back salmon populations and restoring a, a healthy aquatic ecosystem. The Trinity River Restoration Program is a partnership of eight different state, federal, local, and tribal agencies that share a common purpose in uh, trying to restore the anadromous fisheries, so the salmon and steelhead of the Trinity River. Anadromous fish are born in tributaries, migrate to the ocean, then return to their native waters to spawn and start the cycle over. The Trinity River is the largest tributary to the Klamath River and a vital part of the Klamath salmon fishery. The complex habitat needed for young salmonids to survive and thrive has been significantly altered by human causes. Over a hundred years of uh, anthropogenic degradation of the river, including mining and the construction of two impassable dams, have left the Trinity River channel in this section of the river very simplified and static. The way the river is now, just a straight shot, that's not how it should be in a valley. In a valley, it should be meandering, there's curves. Um, and that straight shot like that, there's not much habitat. The Dutch Creek Project is one of the 47 sites that were identified for restoration back in the late 90s. The river should be forming a functional riparian forest and forming a floodplain that can support fish. But right now, you have like eight feet of rock with nothing growing on it between the river and what should be a floodplain. So the existing floodplain doesn't get activated very often um, except for very high flows. And so what we're doing is providing kind of a, help, a helping hand to the river by lowering the floodplain. We're also creating al uh, whole meanders in the, a, a big meander at Dutch Creek which is kicking the river from one side all the way across the valley to the other. For us to be able to give the river a dynamic channel and a functional floodplain and all the things that both fish and wildlife that use the river need, we have to throw diesel at the problem. You know, we, we get big yellow machines to move the rocks for us because we don't have thousands of years. These salmon don't have thousands of years. Here at the Dutch Creek, you know, the hydraulics, the channel geometry, uh, you know, design constraints, all of that's very unique, which requires, you know, a unique design. And then it's also a really remote site. It's difficult to get to. You can't just drive up to this site, get out, and you're on it. You've got to cross the river. You have to you know, construct an access route to get to this project. So just the logistics of getting to this project site is very challenging. The biggest part of our project is providing habitat for the juveniles. They need refugia from fast flowing water. They, need, they like slow water. They need cover and they need food, whether it's floodplains or alcoves or eddies on the inside of pools, side channels, all these different areas can provide the, that good quality and a diversity of habitat for fish at a range of flows. We construct these channels to get the river to move and uh, act a little more natural. We put in wood jams uh, as well as rock sandbars and gravel bars and rock structures to help make the river move. In our restoration sites, we make sure we have a lot of rocks for them to hide behind when there's water's high or when it's too fast, and we also have a lot of wood to do the same thing. Uh, trees are a big component, especially when we put the log jam in. The log jam is going to basically force the river to come in through a meander. Mostly it's all materials that are here. We, we excavate like you say, this uh, channel here, and we use all that material, we put it through our rock processor. And we separate the cobble sizes, whether it's fine material, whether it's fish rock, which is like little gravel material, or cobble, which is a little bit bigger, or just giant boulders. And almost 70,000 cubic yards of earth were removed to lower the floodplain by an average of nine feet and create a new meander bend 90 feet wide at low flows. We've done a lot of lowering on that to create different levels of floodplains and seasonal channels that can inundate uh, throughout different times of the year when the fish need it. Most winters it'll be underwater uh, all winter providing excellent rearing habitat to fish. In addition to floodplains, we've also increased the linear length of the channel in this restoration site. 
uh, we added a, a meander to it, so that increases the amount of physical habitat that's available to fish and other aquatic organisms. My name is Elton Baldy. I'm the reef edge coordinator for the Hoopa Valley Tribe. When the construction crew come, comes in, they, they tear the site up and, and set it down to where, get it to where they, they need it. We have to come back in and, and get the site re come back in with planting it with uh, cottonwood and uh, willow poles back in the trenches. The Hoopa Valley Tribe is planting ponderosa pine and white oak on the valley slopes to prevent erosion, while cottonwoods, willows, and other native plants will add stability and shade to the floodplain. At this site, vegetation is planted low enough to reach the water table so it can remain moist and take root. The Dutch Creek site is really a testament to the collaborative partnership that exists within the Trinity River Restoration Program. It's funded and permitted by the Bureau of Reclamation. It was designed by the California Department of Water Resources and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and reviewed by several other agencies. It's being built by the Hoopa Valley and Yurok tribes and uh, it's being constructed with the support and on the land of the Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Forest Service. So this is a huge effort with a lot of different people coming together to make it happen. And everybody brings their own unique and important perspective. The tribes provide invaluable insight. They've been managing these systems for thousands of years. So the tribe is pretty much all, all the operators on site. We have the Hoopa tribe, the Karuk tribe, and uh, mainly the Yurok tribe. Our livelihood depends on the fish, and so if we can enhance the fish habitat, it, it helps all of us, you know, as well as everybody else on the river. There's a lot of other people that like fish, too. A healthy fishery benefits the local community by providing food, recreation, and economic revenue in, in terms of uh, people coming from all over the state and the country to fish in these waters. The juvenile coho are using our sites, and you know that's what makes it all worth it. You know, when we leave this site, you know, the river will take control and, and hopefully do what it uh, does best. <laughs>